This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 436, Clutter-Free Forever, 7 Strategies to Clear Your Physical and Digital Junk. Good morning, and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders, and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm, create powerful, lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I'll break down the stress-inducing nature of clutter, how to eliminate that pain forever, and how my desktop zero policy has taken over my entire life, but in a really great way. Let's get to it. So right now, I am looking at page 118 of my book, The 5 a.m. Miracle. Uh, If you did not know, there is a book about this exact same podcast, and I go through all kinds of productivity strategies that really help you not only wake up early, but also get a lot more done in your day. And the episode this week is going to break down a few of those concepts I discussed in the book, specifically those that are embodied in this umbrella term that I call equilibrium zero. And so the desktop zero policy we'll discuss this week really fits into that umbrella, not only for your digital desktop, but your physical one as well, and how those two interact with you managing all of the potential junk or clutter or stuff or goals in your life. All of those things are possible. All those things are in your life in some capacity. The question is, Are you managing those things? Are you organizing them? Is there a structure, a strategy, a plan in place to prevent the stress-inducing, exhausting nature of junk in your life? Nobody wants clutter. Clutter doesn't work for us. It only works against us. And so the question is, how do we create a, a working and living environment that allows for us to optimally exist and produce things and have fun in the spaces that we're in? Now, having said all of this, there are two basic ways people approach their stuff. There is the what I'll call creative way, and then there's the super organized way. I'm actually not arguing for either one of them. In essence, what I'm arguing for here is a hybrid model of the two. Although, as you'll hear me explain it, it's going to sound like the super organized way. But it technically allows for more creativity because it's organized well. So the creative perspective in terms of organization is one of, ah, just put everything everywhere. You know, I'm an artist. I'm a creative. I've got stuff everywhere, and it's part of my process. I understand that perspective, and I also understand the opposite and the extreme nature, which is everything organized 100% all the time, super diligent to all the details without any leeway whatsoever. My perspective is that neither of those is very healthy because both of them have extreme consequences that come with them. The super creative way means you lose things all the time. You're disorganized. There's a lack of cohesion. It's a mess. And the super diligent organized way is extremely rigid and doesn't allow for any sense of humanity in the process because it's just too formulaic, too systematic. And so I like to find some kind of a hybrid model, the two of those, that when they're married together, creates a really beautifully organized system that also allows for flexibility and creativity. So that's the intention behind this system. However, we're going to approach it from the perspective that clutter and messiness is bad and being organized is good. You may not agree with that perspective. You may think, Jeff, I like my junk. I like my stuff out. I want to see it. I want to touch it. I want it to be all over. If that's your take, fine. I don't think it's the best one to take, but let's just agree, disagree on that one. And we're going to move forward with this concept of desktop zero, clutter-free forever, seven strategies to clear your physical and digital junk. Let me start with that last word of forever, because In the nature of life and the way that we have our things laid out, we're never going to actually be clutter-free forever unless you stop doing anything. Like We as people interact with our environments, and so we're going to have clutter that forms just by the nature of living. The real question is, are there systems in place to prevent that clutter and then clean it up forever? 
In other words, you're going to always have a plan in place. There's always a policy, always a procedure, always a system that exists that ensures that at some point, whether it's every single day or every week, your stuff will be processed. Your things will be put away. The trash is trash. The recycling is taken out. The donations are done. That everything is processed. That's what we're going for here. And so the idea of having a system that's there forever really just means a long-term plan that what I do today, I can do tomorrow and next week and next year. As long as that's true, you have a solid system. So now let's get to these seven strategies. These are seven strategies that will help you start from a mess and then take yourself into a clutter-free desktop zero existence. And that's where we're going. So I'm assuming at the outset you need to clean up some messes. Number one is just that. We're going to take inventory and acknowledge the mess. Where is your life out of control? Is it your computer's desktop on the digital space? Is it your home office or garage or closet? Or is it buried in your digital files and folders in your Dropbox or Google Drive account? Or maybe it's your task manager in your calendar. They're just out of control or possibly even your project management systems. All of these things and more can be at any point in time just out of control. Like the mess is too much, so much so that it produces stress and anxiety. And this is the problem with clutter, is that for most of us, when we see clutter, when we see a closet that's just full of junk or a garage we've just been piling things into for years but never taken the time to actually go through it, well, then we wind up, like you see on TV, these TV shows around hoarders, right? We don't want to become physical or digital hoarders because the consequences of that lifestyle is one of stress. It's one of, I don't know how to move forward because I just don't know where to begin. I can't find my things. I can't make decisions. I literally physically and mentally feel exhausted and stressed out because there's just too much junk. We don't want that. You know, we want to feel alive in the spaces that we're in. We want to feel excited and joyful to be doing our thing to be working on our craft, to be hanging out with our family on the weekends in a home that's not just filled with stuff. You know, we want the living spaces and the working spaces we're in to bring life to us, or as Marie Kondo says, to spark joy. And if these environments don't spark joy for you, well, then it's time to identify them, label them, make a list of them, and then we're going to work through those things one thing at a time. So step number one in this process is take inventory Acknowledge the mess and make a very diligent list of here are the areas of my life and work that are out of control, that are a little too messy, and we're going to fix those right now. Step number two in this process is to pick one of those areas and begin. So we're not going to do the whole thing at once. So let's lower the stress a little bit, but we're not going to tackle our entire life at one time, one area at a time. But with each of those areas, we'll knock it out completely. We're going to start and finish an area 100% and then go on to the next one. So really hold back on your desire to want to do a lot all at once or do multiple areas at the same time. That's not going to work for us. Now, by the nature of working on things, everything is interconnected. So you will maybe by default do some of that, but limit yourself there. Hold yourself back and really stay focused on one room of your house at a time, one digital folder at a time, one desktop of a computer at a time one thing at a time. Now, along this process, there's going to be this tendency to ask a lot of questions because that's what this process is all about. We're looking for things and asking the question, where does this go? What's the ideal location for this file on my computer, for this piece of clothing on the floor? Where does it go? And the answer will be, could be in the trash, could be in a cabinet, could be in a folder, could be recycled, donated. It's going to be processed in some way. This entire system is about identifying one individual thing at a time and asking the question, where does this belong? Now, this can be a tough process, but in general, it's fairly straightforward. You'll probably either A, know the answer right away, or B, you're going to feel stuck and not really sure what to do. If you know what to do, you do it right away. If you don't know, We're going to create a temporary dumping ground for all the things we're unsure of. 
So for your physical stuff, set a space aside in your home or office. Could be your garage, could be a closet, could be a spare bedroom. Wherever you are willing to say, here is where all the stuff is going to go that I just don't know yet what to do with. Digitally, same thing. Create a folder on your computer and dump things there where you're just like, I don't know right now. I'll get to it later. That's okay. We're going to create a space for that. And then we're going to clean up those areas at the end of this process. And then as you're working through each of these items and asking those questions, where does this belong? Your number one priority will be minimalism. Our goal is simplicity, right? The opposite of clutter is minimalism. The opposite of junk is organized and systematized items. And the best way to organize anything is to organize fewer of those things. So we get rid of whatever we can. And yes, that means trashing, recycling, donating, eliminating whatever you can. The fewer things you have to work with, the easier it is to organize, clarify, and move forward. So if you're ever confused on what do I do with this or that, get rid of it. If you don't know you need to keep it, you don't. Just get rid of it in whatever way is best for that item. That will make you feel so much better. This is the cool part about this process. I literally do spark joy in myself while doing these kinds of processes because I love feeling that sense of I got rid of something. It's gone now. I have space in my life. I have margin. I have physical room, digital room. I have space to breathe. And that's what the benefit of all this is. You're going to feel this immediate sense of refreshing optimism because you don't feel weighed down by all of the stuff. That's where we're going here. And it really does feel great. Step number three in this process is to create organizational structures. Now, this is awesome if you're a type A person. If you're a type B person, this is going to feel kind of clunky or awkward or just unnatural. But work with this. It's a system that will get you where you want to be. Now, the best place to begin here to organize the things that you have, uh, let's go with the physical world at first, your actual physical stuff. Once you have taken away all the junk and it's cleared out, and all that remains in, let's say, a given room are the things you want to keep. Well, then the question is to ask yourself, what's the ideal setup for this environment? What would it look like if it was in a perfectly organized space? And then you set out to do that. You not only identify the ideal, but you go and actually develop that for yourself. Now, if it's in a space like a garage or a closet, you may have a shelving system of some kind, right? An actual practical way to put boxes onto shelves and organize your stuff. If it's a different kind of space, like an office or a bedroom or a, a living space, it will look different, but the process is still the same because our goal is to identify the ideal and then put everything away. Which brings me to probably one of the most important parts of this whole system is, which is that everything belongs somewhere. Your stuff doesn't belong on the floor. Your stuff doesn't belong in your way. Your stuff doesn't belong probably where it is right now. It probably belongs somewhere that's more intelligent, more organized, more structured, an end result that's more ideal. And that's the goal. Identify the ideal and then go make that happen. Now, along the way, while you're organizing and shelving things, we're going to consolidate like items together, put them into boxes and label them. Right? That's kind of the core structure of really saying, I know what I have, it's all together, it's organized well, it's labeled, I can find it again later. That's the practical structure for physical and digital things. If everything is labeled and everything is brought together that's similar, it'll be so much easier to then go through it later to know what to keep, what to get rid of, and how to process what remains. Now, in the digital world, it's going to be a little bit different because there is an endless chasm of digital space. Right? Our physical space is limited by the space we're in, how large our home is, how large our office is. Or if you choose to go get a storage bin somewhere else and expand it, yes, that's possible. I think the better option is to be more of a minimalist and not have quite so much stuff, but we still are limited by the physical spaces we're in. The digital world, though, has nearly limitless capacity, which means the possibility for digital junk is extraordinary. And if there's any area of your life that's really messed up, 
my guess is the digital world is the most messed up. It's the most unorganized. And so the goal here absolutely is to delete things, whatever you possibly can. Every old thing you don't need and you're never going to need again, delete it. Now, you may think, well, Jeff, if I have so much storage space, why not keep it? You don't need it. Like, it's not valuable anymore. And in fact, keeping it will cause more of a mental strain on you in the future than not having it at all. Yes, if you want to keep some things for a certain amount of time, you can set a limit to how long you'll keep old stuff. And that's fine. But don't keep things forever unless you absolutely need them forever. Now, with the things that remain, then the real challenge, especially if you're a type B person, uh, but for anybody, is to properly label and organize those digital items. I have gone through a process like this recurrently, every few months for my entire adult life. And it is a process, even for someone like me who is organized. There's a lot of stuff in our lives. And so to not have a rhythmic system of going through it, it can easily become overwhelming. And it's completely possible to find yourself drowning in digital clutter. And so the process to organize those things, consolidate them, put them in folders, and then label them properly, it's a fun process because it actually works and you feel better about it and you'll then begin to see really creative ways to organize what you have. But you have to commit to the process. Really set aside time on your calendar to do this because it needs to happen. But then when it does, it is incredibly effective. Now, also in the digital space, the same principle still applies that everything goes somewhere. And yes, you can have a digital folder for now to put things you're not sure of. But at the end of the day, the file has to go somewhere. There is a place for it. So figure out where that place is and put it there. Now, number four on our list today is a phenomenal strategy that I have been much more intentional about in the last few years, which I call active projects up front. That's exactly what it means. It means your active projects, the tasks and things you're currently working on, are up front, they're visible, they're accessible. And everything else is buried out of sight, out of mind. Having said that, that does not mean your active projects are in your way. And so I view that as, let's say, your computer desktop, for example. Mine is completely clear all the time. My digital computer desktop never has files on it, unless I'm actively working on those projects. My physical office does not have stuff out unless I am actively in the moment working on those things. Now, if the project is finished, if the task is completed, I then put it away before I do the next thing. And this is incredibly important. Our goal is to do one thing at a time, keeping things simple and easy. So if it's active and it's current and it's what you're doing now, then fine, have it out and get to it. Be creative, be a little messy in that process. Allow it to exist in the form it needs to exist. But when it's done, we put it away. At the end of the day, we put it away. This is extremely important. Your active projects are up front, but everything else, everything that's completed is definitely out of the way. Anything that's over and you're not gonna touch again forever or for a long time, once again, out of sight, out of mind. What this will do, practically speaking, is allow you to stay forward thinking. We're always mentally thinking about what's the next thing for me to do. And it's really hard to do that if old stuff is in front of you. It's blocking you. It's literally an obstacle to you doing the thing you want to do. So the old stuff has to go. It's a big boulder in your way. This path needs to be cleared. So take the old stuff, whatever is completed, whatever is not active, and find a place for it that's out of sight and out of mind. Strategy number five is that everything lands on the desktop to be processed. I view my desktop as my workspace. It is the place where the active projects are being worked on. Our desktops are the places where everything ends up, and then we have to process those things and put them away. That, in a nutshell, is what work really is. Things come in, whether from an external source or our own internal mind, things land in our lives, they're processed on a desktop or a workspace, and then they go somewhere else. And that process is one that can be fluid, it's one that can be exciting to do, and it's one that ultimately, if you do this system I'm talking about, results in you doing one thing at a time and everything else is organized and put away. 
but the desktop is the place where all this happens. So in a digital desktop sense, my computer's desktop is empty unless there are files I'm actively working on. And then when I'm finished, immediately in that moment, they go somewhere else. So I'm always getting back to zero. Just like an email inbox, when you finish all the messages, it goes to inbox zero. Well, this is desktop zero. All the things that were there are processed, put away. The desktop is now clean and clear. And yeah, that applies to your physical space as well. When it's done, it's put away, you're back to zero. It's done, it's put away, you're back to zero. Over and over and over again. That's what this process is. And that allows you, once again, to get back to the thing you're currently working on, your next forward-moving project. Because once again, the goal here is goal achievement. We're doing things we care about and not being distracted by all the other minutia. So use the desktop as your active workspace, and then when you're finished, it all goes away. Now, as a bonus tip, uh, there is an application on my Mac I have used for years that has been really helpful in maintaining my desktop as my primary workspace and to not lose any extra files on the computer. It's called Hazel, and Hazel provides automation tools. So you can create all kinds of rules to say, I want to move these files and these folders to these locations for this reason, and there's a lot of potential for it. Now, one way that I use that is to automatically move all the files from my downloads folder to the desktop. And it makes sense why I would want to do so. Anything that I download becomes an active file that needs to be processed. And so for me, I don't want to have to dig through my computer to find the downloads folder or any other folder for that matter where things may land automatically. I want everything to go to the desktop by default. So that means in the browsers on your computer, you change the default download location to your desktop. Everything then lands there automatically. And if it does, it can then be processed and put away. There are so many people who have downloads folders and documents folders and these extra just hidden folders on their computers with lots and lots of junk. Things they never even knew existed or things they thought they knew they were going to take care of later. It just never happened. All these things, right? We're not trying to become the kinds of people who lose a lot of important things. We want everything to land on the desktop so everything can be processed appropriately. Nothing is hidden. Everything is active and upfront, processed, put away. Okay, now we're at step number six in this process, and I'm assuming up to this point, you have been going through your life, your physical and digital stuff, piece by piece, day by day, week by week, as long as it takes to clear out all the junk and all the clutter. Now, if you took my advice from earlier, you have a dumping ground for the things you don't know yet what to do with, which could be, once again, your garage or a closet for physical stuff or a folder for your random digital stuff. Either way, you have a lot of things you're just not sure yet what to do with. Well, this is the time to answer that question. And here's the good news. If you've gone through the process up to this point, you have created organizational structures. You have consolidated items together. You have thrown away, recycled, donated, eliminated lots of extra stuff. So what you have left to work with will be a much smaller pile. And you will probably have a pretty good idea at this point where to put these things. It's so much more obvious how to organize what remains because the rest of your life is so clean and organized, it just makes sense. It becomes logical and easy, which is the whole point. All right, if you go back to the beginning of this process where you had large piles of stuff and you're just stressed out by it, it's too much to deal with, well, it's hard to process a lot all at once. But if you go through the process step by step, piece by piece, one thing at a time, when you get near the end, well, things are so simple and so organized, you've, and you're so good at it now, you've gained the skills to do this, that answering the question of, well, where does this random thing go, is a lot easier. And then the even better part is the maintenance of this system, the ongoing nature of doing this is so much easier. Which brings us to the final step. Number seven is to commit to clutter-free forever. And that means every day. It means you clean up the mess every day. You put things away every day. You clear your desktop on your computer and your physical space every day. Because everything goes somewhere. It all belongs in its proper place, and that's probably not in your way. 
so you commit to a clutter-free forever lifestyle, which means you're organized, but then when it's time to do your work, yes, you're creative and you're messy and you're having fun and it's great. And then it's over and it's put away. That's the rhythm here. That's the process here to be a creative and organized person at the same time who lives and works in spaces that spark joy. If I can steal that phrase once again from Marie Kondo, that's the goal here. Clutter free forever. I love it. I use it every day. It works beautifully. I hope you adopt that strategy as well. If you have any challenges or problems or questions with this process, uh, email me, jeff at jeffsanders.com. I'd be very happy to answer your questions and really work through with you uh, how to make this possible because it's such a beautiful thing when all your stuff is in the right place. And for the action step this week, you know what it is. Adopt a desktop zero policy today. Now, desktop zero has literally changed my life. It's changed the way I work. It has changed my results. This process is worth it. Yes, up front, there's a lot of work. Yes, there is maintenance involved. But that's what this is. You do the work and you get the results you want. So adopt this policy, clean up the mess, and enjoy those amazing results. JeffSanders.com slash 436 is the place to go for the episode notes. And of course, subscribe to this podcast. JeffSanders.com slash subscribe has a ton of apps to choose from or use the app you're using right now. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life. And the fun begins bright and early.